This is a, uh, a Gaja Barrera. Gaja is the, uh, the, the brand of machine and the Barrera is the specific model. Just to give you an idea, uh, other super automatic espresso machines can range anywhere from uh, 400 bucks to $3,200. Um, this machine is, is pretty much um, a great benefit to anyone who ends up visiting places like Starbucks or their local coffee houses or baristas. And you're, you're paying six, seven dollars for a, a cup of, a specialty cup of coffee. And you're talking about people who do this daily, if not multiple times every single day. Uh, you easily spend thousands of dollars on coffee already. So investing five or six hundred bucks uh, into a machine like this, believe it or not, is a huge, huge money saver. You get a lot of bang for your buck. Now, what is a super automatic espresso machine? Um, there's a lot of different ways you can make espresso. And um, this is the literally the most convenient way, a super automatic is kind of like what it what it suggests. It does everything for you. It's it's totally automated. Um, this is what's referred to as a bean to cup machine. You put fresh roasted whole coffee beans in the top, turn on, push a button, and you have fresh roasted uh, espresso. And of course, you can use that to make a multitude of drinks. And yes, you can make regular old black coffee. Now, of course, with any machine or specifically any product, there's going to be pros and cons. Nothing's perfect. Um, where this really shines, I think, is it's the fact that it's so compact. Okay. Um, this is only 12 inches high, all right, and about 12 and a quarter inches to the very uh, highest point of the machine, which is the lid for the bean hopper on the back. A lot of people have a limited height on, in their kitchen because of their cabinets. Now, if I put the camera up, you'll see that I still have some excess room on top here, so size isn't a huge issue. Um, I still like the fact that it's very compact here. Uh, price is an issue, okay? There's a lot of different factors, and people pick different machines for different reasons. Does the $500 machine make coffee just as good as the $3,200 machine? In most cases, yes. It really just depends. I think personally that it comes back to uh, whatever coffee beans you're putting into it. If you have a quality coffee bean, the machine plays a little part in how it's going to taste. However, um, this machine is still extremely capable and I think would make just as good of a cup of uh, you know, uh, coffee or a uh, shot of espresso just as much as the, the $2,000 machine or the $1,500 machine or anything else. But um, the pros of the machine on this specific machine are very great. The biggest one obviously is size. A lot of people do have that limited uh, counter space, uh, specifically the counter uh, height because of their cabinets being over top. But besides that, uh, two features on this machine that I really, really like compared to a lot of the other machines is the fact that both the water reservoir and the, uh, the drop container where your, your uh, used coffee grinds are actually coffee pucks because it's, you'll, you'll see that later but they both uh, are in the front, so very easily accessible. Once I turn this machine on and push it back into the nook, I keep this in the corner of my, uh, uh, my kitchen counter here, um, I don't have to touch it. I don't have to constantly move it. A lot of these different machines, your water reservoirs are on the side or even the back, and you're talking about handling your machine constantly. Every single time you move your machine, you have a possibility of damaging it. Um, some of the downsides you get because it is smaller, obviously, capacity. The bean hopper on top, which I'll show you in a second, uh, holds a maximum of 8.8 .8 ounces of beans, and the water reservoir holds about 40 ounces of water. Now, for me, in my specific use for this, which is, you know, on a uh, an average basis, I'll probably make one to two coffee drinks a day with this machine. If you're someone who makes eight or nine or ten cups of coffee, or you know, shots of espresso or whatever, any kind of milk-based coffee drink, and you're constantly using the machine, or perhaps you uh, constantly entertain. Maybe you're in a household with 10 people in it, who knows? Um, you'd probably want to go with something that's bigger for the, the sheer fact that you don't have to put water in it as often, you don't have to fill the bean hopper as often. You do have a, uh, um, a place to put a filter if you want to put a, uh, like a charcoal filter in here or something. Anyway, like I said, on the back is the uh, on-off switch right next to the power plug. So once we turn this on, you'll see our power button is gonna just slowly flash red. And that's normal just to continuously do that. On top here, here's where the, the cup warmer is. All right, now on top here on the front where the cups you see, this is where I store these cups, these glasses. This is a, uh, a cup warmer on the top. Now this is passive, meaning that it, there's not a specific heating element that's keeping this hot. You know, you're not pushing a button and starting this to get it nice and warm. Uh, being passive, basically as your, your uh, boiler inside is heating water and stuff like that, the steam that is, you know, produced by the machine, either by, you know, the, um, the steam wand or internally, it's basically rising. Heat rises, steam rises, so this does get a little bit warm. I did find that this does not get incredibly hot, so you'll never burn yourself on it, first of all. But I prefer um, to warm my cup, because when you're pouring your shot or, or having a cup of coffee, it's something I never really even thought of until I started watching uh, some of these videos on their on Whole Latte Love's uh, YouTube page. 
is when you're pouring hot coffee into a you know cold cup or even a room temperature cup, you're losing the heat of your coffee. You're, the cup itself is immediately shocking that heated coffee and pulling the temperature down, and um, you know your coffee cools off faster. So it makes sense to warm your cup, uh, you know, before you actually fill it with coffee. But what I'm, the point I'm trying to make here is that this passive cup warmer on top, although it does get warm, it doesn't get warm enough for my preference. So what I do is when um, the machine pushes water through the, uh, the steam wand to clean it, I'll fill my cup with that. Or when it does its uh, rinse cycle, which you'll see here when you turn the machine on after it's been off for a while, it will go through a rinse cycle. Okay, basically pump hot water. Uh, through the machine to clean everything out. If there's a, you know old coffee sitting in there in the line or something, it cleans all out, which is fantastic. What I'll do is before I make a cup of coffee, I will uh, fill the cup with. I'll use the cup I'm going to make the coffee in to catch that water, and therefore warm my cup. That's the passive uh, cup warmer. A lot of these uh, super automatics will have some form of a cup warmer. Uh, some of the bigger ones and or more expensive ones have a specific heating unit that's made just to heat that. Okay, whether it's electronic or from the boiler itself. We have our bean hopper, all right? There's a, uh, a lid for it with a rubber seal on it, so it keeps all the air out of your beans, so they keep nice and fresh. All right, like I said, it holds up to uh, 8.8 .8 ounces in here, um, and I've used ground coffee as well. I always keep ground coffee on hand, just really cheap. You know, I think this is, uh, I think it's Maxwell House or something. Just some cheap, whatever, pre-ground coffee, and they have a uh, bypass doser here you can put grinds in, which is a huge, a really, Big beneficial feature. I think pretty much every super automatic espresso machine has this option. So if you don't have access to whole coffee beans, the machine comes with this plastic scoop you see right there, and it's the exact dose you want for a uh, you know for this specific machine. And basically, you know, you don't have to even touch the lid when the lid's on. You have access to this uh, bypass doser, and you put your grinds right in there. Now you can put grinds in there to make regular coffee. You can do anything with that. But basically, you have the option to not grind fresh beans, okay, and to just use ground coffee, pre-ground coffee. Yes, all the uh, super automatics will have their own um, built-in grinder. That's bean to cup, it's doing everything for you. So you actually have a coffee grinder within the machine itself, which is fantastic. And what happens is when it goes on, it vibrates and um, pulls all the beans down in there and grinds exactly what you need for one brewing process. When you're grinding your coffee, you have an adjustment knob here uh, for your grinds, all right? There's five different adjustments and basically this is how fine your coffee grinds are. When you're making espresso, you want a really fine setting, okay? So when the, the water, hot water is pushed through your, your grinds, the finer it is, the more flavor you're really picking up on that. It's very kind of condensed flavor. If you're making a traditional cup of coffee, regular old coffee, you know, whether it's black or you put cream and sugar in or whatever, um, while the grinder's on, that's when you adjust this and you basically rotate this to a, a higher uh, or a bigger circle. I don't know if you can see those on there. But basically that's, you know, showing you that it's a, uh, you know, the grind setting. So there's five different grind settings. Now on the front here, where the, uh, the coffee dispenses out, there is an adjustment. Pull on both sides. This will raise and lower the, uh, the spout where it's actually coming out. So if you have a uh, smaller cup here, let's say this cup, this one shot of espresso or something, um, it basically you can adjust this down to prevent some splashing. Uh, I found that I haven't used this, honestly. Since I've had the machine, I've had it up the entire time to accommodate larger cups. And believe it or not, this will accommodate a fairly large mug. All right, here's one of my favorite pottery barn mugs. And fits perfectly under there. Everything rests on here. This is your drip tray, which is pretty straightforward in case you make a mess or whatever. It's not going on your countertop. It's catching any residual um, splash or anything like that, particularly when you're using the steam wand. In this specific case, it's a plastic drip tray and it has a uh, metal insert on top. I lift this up. You'll see it's very easy to clean. Just wash it in the sink. Pretty cool about this too is that there's a, a little plastic piece in here that floats, all right, and it pushes up. And obviously, you can see it's like a bright international reddish orange color. So, basically, as you're going through the process of using the machine, this will slowly push up and up and up as it gets filled up to let you know that it's time to uh, empty your tray. All right, so first, I want to show you I'm just going to brew a uh, shot of espresso to show you the, uh, the motions here and show you the buttons and stuff like that. So, I'm going to put my little mug under there. Let's pull this forward so you can get a better look at it. So, once you turn it on, like I said, um, when you turn on the, the power switch on the back there, this front will be flashing red. Once you push it, the machine's on. When you push it off again, it just goes back into a power save mode. Okay, let's turn it back on. A bunch of different icons here. They're very straightforward. They use, obviously, the pictures represent what it is. Basically, four buttons on the front here, your control buttons. Um, the power one, which I already showed you. Underneath it, there's a, a coffee bean and a little scoop. Now, when you cycle through here, you basically have four options, okay? 
the first option here is a little one bean. All right, the second one's two beans, the third one's three beans, and the last one is that little scoop. This is going to be your, um, you know, how powerful your coffee is, how strong it is. One being, you know, weak, weaker coffee, two being a medium roast, and three being basically a bolder or darker, stronger roast. All right, excuse me, not roast, um, actually your shot. So when you change the amount of beans, you're changing the amount of uh, coffee that's grinding. Okay, if you want a, a lighter coffee, it, it's not going to grind as much. You go on three beans, it's going to grind the maximum for that specific shot. I found I happen to prefer really strong coffee, so I always stay at three beans. What's pretty cool is that when you go to that fourth option, it goes to the little scoop, and that's when you use your bypass doser on top. If you're putting pre-grounds in there, or pre-ground coffee, you put it directly in there, and then you want to make sure you're on your scoop so it knows to pull it from there as opposed to grinding. As far as the grinder inside this machine, um, it, it's pretty quiet. Uh, I have a Keurig. Actually, it's right here. I still use it. It's still an awesome machine, but nothing like this. Um, that thing's pretty loud. <laughs> I have the first, first generation one, and when that thing is going, it is screaming. In the morning, it wakes me up. Um, with this machine, with the grinder on, it's, it's pretty quiet. Um, it's not dead silent, but it's not rumbling or anything like that, even though it's vibrating in there. It's pretty contained and, and pretty quiet. Um, so yes, I'm gonna go to three beans for the strongest coffee, or the most grinds available. And then you have two buttons on the left here. The top button is showing, let me zoom in here so you can see it's a little better. The top button is showing a, um, like a half filled cup, and the bottom one is a more filled cup. You can easily program these. It's really easy to program. Basically, when you get your machine new, when you, uh, or at any point, you can program these and change the, you know, how it's programmed. Basically, you push and hold the button down. You hold it the, down the entire time. It's gonna first grind your beans, then um, you know, fill up, it's going to tamp inside, which is basically compressing the coffee grounds, and then it's going to start brewing. You hold this down the entire time, okay? Once it starts brewing your shot inside, you let go when that's enough, and it will always remember that exact amount. Not how much you're grinding, um, but it's going to, amount, it's going to uh, remember exactly how much uh, coffee it's actually dispensing into your glass. So what I've done is I've programmed this to basically be one shot, or what I would consider one shot of espresso. And then um, on the bottom button, it's the same thing. You can program whatever you want, but for this one, I programmed it for, a, for my specific mug. So when I push this, it'll brew coffee until that specific mug is filled to where I want it. Really, really simple, really straightforward. At any time at all, I can push and hold that, and I can actually you know, reprogram it. It's really, really simple. I love that feature. Now, at any point in time, if you push this button once, it'll show just the one cup here, and it'll brew your one shot. Uh, if I push it twice, it'll show the double cup and basically has two shots. What's cool about this is that if it does two shots, it'll go through the entire process again and grind fresh beans. It won't put hot water through those already used beans, okay? So if I do two shots or even two cups of coffee, it'll go through the whole process twice. Then you have uh, this kind of a knob. Now you have two position, well, three positions. Right now it's just on the, the upright position, which, which it has to be in to brew your coffee. Uh, to the left, if I turn this to the left, which I'll show you in a couple minutes, um, it'll go to the steam option, and to the right will be hot water. You can dispense hot water with this machine if you're making a cup of tea or doing whatever. Like I said, if I wanted to just put some hot water in my cup to warm it, I can do that. So it does just dispense water. So, by the way, at any point in time, if you're out of water or if your garbage container is filled up with grinds, um, you will have a blinking light, you know, the appropriate light that will come up either on the top or the right and just letting you know what the deal is, all right? So it, it's very good about letting you know if something's wrong, so it's not gonna go through a cycle and then you're gonna run out of water or something. It'll let you know in advance. And when they're out, you'll also get that same warning light. So if I'm out of water or if this, if this container is not properly seated in, I'll have that warning light. All right, so power's on. All I have to do, this is preset for one shot, so I'm gonna push this button. I already selected how strong I want my coffee. It's three beans. So I'm pushing the button once, and I'll go through the pro as things are happening, I'll tell you what's going on. So first, Grinding our beans. Pulling the appropriate amount of beans down into the grinder. What you're hearing now is the uh, a pre soak. What it does is this noise right there. It's wetting my grinds first so that um, when it brews through, it's, uh, it's already prepped. It's better for brewing. Zoom in on that. You can see there's two, it dispenses out of two holes. This is pretty pretty uh, common for any espresso machine to, to uh, pump out of two holes here. So what you can do is you can actually put two glasses side by side. 
All right, so that it's actually brewing into two glasses at the same time. Whether you're doing two shots or whatever you're, whatever you want to do, it'll pretty much every machine, whether it's super automatic or semi-automatic, um, it will have two spouts that it's actually brewing out of. So that's pretty much it. I have a shot of espresso. You can see the crema, which is on top. Basically, when you're making espresso, and this is for people who just don't know anything about it at all, and this again, it's all new to me. Um, the difference between regular coffee and espresso is espresso is pressure brewed through finer grinds, okay? So what's happening is you're, you're putting pressure on that water and pushing it through the grinds as opposed to a drip cell coffee, your regular old coffee pot where basically gravity is pulling the water down through coarser grinds. And what happens is as it's pushing through, it's almost like it, it comes out in like a froth. It doesn't come out like a liquid, it comes out like a, a froth or a foam. And the foam that settles on top is known as the crema. And it's very sought after to have a very rich, thick, creamy crema. It's where a lot of the oils collect from the coffee beans. It's extremely flavorful. Um, so this is what I just have it set for one shot. It's a little bit of a heavy shot. Most people would have it set for a little bit less. But you can see nice, rich, foamy crema on top. All right, and as it's uh, actually brewing, you can see it, it kind of settling. It's actually fun to watch. <laughs> Maybe I'm easily amused, but anyway, let me take a little sip of this. Extremely rich delicious now if you wanted to make a uh, uh, Americana which from what I understand is basically a shot of espresso with hot water in it so let's say you make, make espresso and it's a little strong for you or you just don't you know it's too much and it's delicious um, all you want to do is add hot water to it and that would be an Americana so what I'm going to do is just for demonstration purposes here I'm going to switch this over to the, uh, the water I'm just going to dispense hot water into my cup. Now that first little bit was basically the, uh, the cleaning of it, but since it's hot water I want, I'll just throw it in my cup anyway. basically thinned out my shot of espresso into a, uh, a less strong coffee drink, an Americana. I'm still getting a lot of that flavor, but it's definitely dulled out. Yeah, so obviously you see the water dispensing through the, uh, the steam wand. The steam wand itself, there's a rubber uh, nub on here. It's very smooth and fluent to move around and to, to rotate. Um, very easy to use. The wand part itself on the bottom here is uh, it doesn't it gets pretty warm but it won't burn you or scold you and by the way this just pulls right off there's a rubber you know two rubber seals here so easy cleaning see the tip there you get with this let's do a milk based drink uh, let's make a cappuccino cappuccinos are fun to make and, and watch and look at all that kind of stuff so I have my little pitcher here of uh, milk to make a cappuccino I'm gonna steam it right into the uh, the mug itself but anyway basically what I do is I'm going to point this towards my drip tray first because it's going to shoot some hot water through there. You don't want hot water in your milk. It's just going to thin it out and it's not what you want. So I'm going to rotate this to the other side where it's pointing at the steam. It's going to shoot out a little bit of steam here. Or excuse me, a little bit of water to clean it. All right. I'm going to put this into my cup. Give it a second to, uh, to start creating that steam. Now I want to leave the tip basically just underneath this uh, top of the uh, milk. All right, so I want to create that air. You can see it's rising in volume. I'm actually going to bring this all the way in because I want to raise the heat a little bit without creating more volume because it's at the top already. All right. Bring that back down. Put my cup right in front of there and brew a shot of espresso. Same thing, three beans. Now, I found this machine, it takes about 21 seconds to brew a shot of espresso. I think 26 seconds is perfectly ideal. Um, the amount of time it takes the coffee or the water to go through the coffee grinds will definitely can you know control basically how much flavor you're getting out of that coffee. For espresso you want to take a little bit of time. You don't want it to just shoot through right away. Alright. 
take you off zoom here. And that is a perfect cup of cappuccino. So, let me give a little taste test here. Mmm. That is delicious. Now, on the side of the machine here, let me open this up. Uh, let me show you the grinds, too. Uh, basically, what happens is, once it grinds your coffee, it's putting into the, uh, the brew group on the inside, which I'm going to show you in a second. And it's pouring into a, an area, and then it's actually pushing up, and it's tamping. Very similar if, you were, if you're a pipe smoker, or if you happen to watch some of the pipe smoking videos I've done. When you tamp your tobacco, you're compressing it, okay? So what it's doing is it's compressing the coffee grinds so that they're not loose. You want them, you know, kind of packed together. So when the, the hot water is being forcefully pushed through it, it's not going to just push right through it. It actually has to, you know, pass this dense, um, you know, section of coffee grinds. But what happens is when it, it kicks it out, it kicks it out in these little, you know, compressed pucks. All right, so they're easy to handle. It sucks all the moisture out. All right, if I were to squeeze this, it would crumble. But it's pretty easy to, uh, to handle, so you're not dealing with more of a mess. But that's basically what you're grinding and uh, compressing. All right, so using about that much coffee per shot. You're getting a heck of a lot of flavor out of it. It's really cool. This uh, holds up to uh, eight pucks. I found that um, it dispenses probably five or six, and then the light will come on. Just because of the way they shoot in there, um, they kind of stack on each other. Even though this will probably hold 10 or 12 of them, the sensor kicks on at about five or six, just, just for reference there. You open the, your side up here, and this is what's called the brew group. All right, see, so just push over. The whole thing comes right out. This is basically, let me just shake this over the sink a little. I'm not dripping. This is the, uh, the brain of the machine. This is what's doing all the work inside. All right, you can see on top here, this piece right here with the O-ring, this is what your, the section underneath is actually pushing up into, and that's uh, tamping your, your coffee grinds. And this whole thing pops right out as far as cleaning. You put this under your sink, you just basically rinse off the grinds in there. Um, and then there's certain spots that are greased up on the tracks. There's, uh, there's grease on there, so you don't really wash this thoroughly. If you did, you know, this comes with a tube of grease, all right, so you can re-grease that if you need to. But basically all you have to do is just rinse this whole brew group, let it air dry, all right, put the whole thing right back in, and you're ready to go. Just put it right in the tracks, and it locks right in. I'm going to put this in the, uh, the steam, I put this over to steam. I just have a um, clean cloth here, a little washcloth. And once this spews out a little bit of hot water or steam, I'm going to shut it back off. That's enough. And just wipe down my uh, entire steam wand here. Okay. You want to do this each time, like I said, just so that you literally don't, you can pull the whole thing off if you want to. Um, make sure that little pinhole is clean. But if nothing else, you just don't want old dried milk to sit on there. That's pretty much it guys. I'm going to put a bunch of links in the description box. Uh, I'll definitely link you to this specific machine so you can look at the specs and the layout of the uh, website and stuff. But besides that, I'm also going to link you to Whole Latte Love's um, YouTube page because it's extremely informative. That's all. Uh, thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions about anything at all, feel free to ask of course. Um, some questions, more technical questions might be more appropriate for, for them. Whole Latte Love. By the way, very catchy name. Whole Latte Love. I just. I'm in love. I'm in love with their company, <laughs> their people, and their products. So I'm sold. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Take care. A, uh, a Gaja Barrera. Gaja is the, uh, the the brand of machine, and the Barrera is the specific model. Just to give you an idea, uh, other super automatic espresso machines can range anywhere from uh, 400 bucks to 3,200 dollars. Um, this machine is is pretty much. Um, a great benefit to anyone who ends up visiting places like Starbucks or their local coffee houses or baristas and you're, you're paying six seven dollars for a, a couple a specialty cup of coffee and you're talking about people who do this daily if not multiple times every single day uh, you easily spend thousands of dollars on coffee already so investing five or six hundred bucks uh, into a machine like this believe it or not is a huge huge money saver you get a lot of bang for your buck now what is a super automatic espresso machine um, there's a lot of different ways you can make espresso, and um, this is the literally the most convenient way. A super automatic is kind of like what it what it suggests. It does everything for you. It's it's totally automated. Um, this is what's referred to as a bean to cup machine. You put fresh roasted whole coffee beans in the top, turn it on, push a button, and you have fresh roasted uh, espresso. And of course, you can use that to make a multitude of drinks. And yes, you can make regular old black coffee. Now, of course, with any machine or specifically any product, there's going to be pros and cons. Nothing's perfect. Um, where this really shines, I think, is it's the fact that it's so compact. Okay, um, This is only 12 inches high. 
all right, and about 12 and a quarter inches to the very uh, highest point of the machine, which is the lid for the bean hopper on the back. A lot of people have a limited height on, in their kitchen because of their cabinets. Now, if I put the camera up, you'll see that I still have some excess room on top here, so size isn't a huge issue. Um, I still like the fact that it's very compact here. Uh, price is an issue, okay? There's a lot of different factors, and people pick different machines for different reasons. Does the $500 machine make coffee just as good as the $3,200 machine? In most cases, yes. It really just depends. I think, personally, that it comes back to uh, whatever coffee beans you're putting into it. You have a quality coffee bean, the machine plays a little part in how it's going to taste. However, um, this machine is still extremely capable and I think would make just as good of a cup of uh, you know, uh, coffee or a uh, shot of espresso just as much as the, the $2,000 machine or the $1,500 machine or anything else. But um, the pros of the machine on this specific machine are very great. The biggest one, obviously, is size. A lot of people do have that